welcome to my Crusader Kings 3 playthrough. Um, so we are going to be playing as the Kingdom of Great Moravia, which you can see right here. Um, I've already made a character. This is not the normal starting character for this. So I just decided to make him because I thought it would be cool. And so we're just going to turn on achievements real quick and we're going to get started. Let's just save that. So uh, if you're not familiar with Crusader Kings 3, uh, it's a pretty complicated game. You'll probably get the hang of it as we go along. I think I'm going to make a guide at some point to explain some of the finer details, um, but I'll explain just minor things as it comes up. So the first thing we want to do here is get married. Um, then we can produce an heir. So uh, I'm just going to arrange that marriage. Let's set our focus so I can start getting perks. And that's about it. Ooh, okay, that's... Great. So what you can see here is there's a faction that wants independence. And uh, that means that if he wins, he will split up from the rest of the group. And uh, I won't have that territory anymore. Looks like he doesn't have a lot, but um, I'd still prefer to keep that all together. Okay, so let's set our jobs on the council. Let's start converting the faith because I want everyone to be the same faith as me in game. Uh, and that will be Catholic in this case. And I also want everyone in the same culture. Uh, just because having everyone be homogenous helps with discontent. And the people will like me more for it. Great. And I am now married. Okay. And let's collect money. Alright. Yeah, let's ask for gold. That's going to be very helpful. We're just going to get the de jure all set up so that people won't hate me. Beginning of a game is always kind of uh, harder to deal with because there's a lot you got to do before you even start. Okay, and now we can kind of take a step back and just look at, okay, what's going on? Like, Ungvar, you don't have a whole lot of uh, forces. If you look here, only about 426. I have about 1,700, so that's going to be pretty helpful. However, his allies are pretty strong, so I don't think I can really attack him. It says, uh, when I says uh, over here that it says it's inferior, that's because I have an ally in Charles the Bald of West Francia, which is this huge country over here. Um, unfortunately, I don't think I can really declare war on him because uh, it would take a long time for West Francian troops to get over here, and I would have already lost the war. So let's focus on people who are much worse than me. For example, this guy. And I do have a Cassius Belly. That just means a reason for declaring war. So let's go ahead and attack him. Because why not? You want more land, right? Okay. So let's go ahead and just do that. And I'm sending my troops over there, and they're going to siege it, and I'm going to try to take it. Okay, perfect. There we go. Let's just enforce the demands. And now, look, voila, my territory. Not sure why you can't be disbanded, though. Because right now, you're taking up quite a lot of money. Ah, oh, sweet. So my wife is pregnant. That's perfect, because I don't know how familiar you guys are with this game, but, um... If you don't have children, your game will end because there won't be people of your dynasty to continue the game. There's actually a couple ways that um, a game of Crusader Kings 3 can end. The first is that you have no valid land. If you don't have land in this game, you're considered irrelevant because this is a game of kings and dukes and emperors. And if you don't have land, then you're screwed. The other option is if you don't have an heir. Um, if you don't have someone who you can play as, uh, that's a member of your dynasty, because you're playing as your dynasty. Um, if you don't have a player who's a player of that, then you have no one to play as when you die, and the game is over. For example, right up here it says no player heir, um, because I don't have any children yet. Now luckily I'm only 17, so hopefully I'll have many children before I die. Uh, the last way you can uh, lose the game, well, actually finish the game, is if it gets to 750, uh, sorry, if it gets to 1453. AD. Uh, we are in 868, so we've got quite a ways to go before that happens. Yes, I should feudalize Krakow. Let's see if I can. I don't have the money yet. That's why money's important. Okay. 
And I can upsurp a high chiefdom here, but again, can't really do that because I don't have the money. Orthodoxy. Yeah. Nope. Don't want that. Okay. Oh no. Well, looks like uh, she's been cheating with my spy master, so I'm just gonna lock her up real quick. Um. Of all the buffoonery I've ever seen, Mayor Milos' main efforts to improve my relations with my neighbors, my good-for-nothing chancellor is officially acknowledged. King Ludwig's claim to the county of Jihlava. Man, I struggle with that. You're supposed to be friends, not enemies. Okay. Yeah, I'll release you from prison, for sure. Okay, and you, my faction, okay, let's, what do we want to name you? My daughter, oh, she's, uh, she's pretty, so let's name you Pritilla. That's creative. Okay, and because she's my only uh, heir right now, I want to make sure she gets an lineal marriage, that they will be of my dynasty, because if not, I'm pretty screwed. Ignore that off to the side of the screen, I'll get to that in a bit. So the thing is, is that it doesn't really matter how much older uh, the, uh, the guy is than the girl, as long as the girl will be able to have kids for long enough, so let's just go ahead and get you a good marriage. Okay, yeah, he's beautiful, that's perfect. And he's not too much older, so let's go with this, the county of Zurich. Oh no! Okay, as I retreat to my chambers for the night, I stumble upon one of my guests, Dushana, in my innermost sanctum. How did she get in here? It is not what I look like, my lord, she claims. The fact that she is half-naked and in the process of bodily defiling my ceremonial sword tells me that it is, in fact, exactly what it looks like. Uh, well, that's weird, and also, yeah, this game's not really for kids. Probably should have mentioned that. Um... Let's go with dungeons for her. She, yeah, no, she cannot. Okay. Okay, and then let's just see, let's... Uh, here we go. Okay, and then let's see, can we ransom you? Will you give me money? Will you give me a favor? That's good enough. Okay. Bloodstained cloth, crow's feathers, strange smelling concoctions. This is the evidence presented by me to a group of viewers from Breshla as proof that Blazena has been practicing witchcraft in her hut on the outskirts of their village. The villagers claim her evil works must be the cause of their sick animals and are causing for her execution. Hmm. Well, I don't really want to upset the peasants, so you're gonna burn. Sorry, lady. Okay, um, let's go with this, because we want money. Money, okay. You know what? I think it's time. I would like to fall in love with my wife. Oh, and it looks like she'll do it. That's perfect. Um, the time has come to let my feelings towards Queen Hildegard be known. I want you to remember this day for the rest of her life. Let's write her a love poem. I'll work. Um, meantime, I'm just going to educate... Uh, Pratilla right there. The candle is burning low and I finally finish my poem. Before I send it, I give it one last read. Your smile is the rock I cling to in stormy seas. I would be blessed if I could hear your voice again, that I may know if your prowess carries off the battlefield. You and me, together forever. The waiting is unbearable. The thought of rejection makes me sick to my stomach. When a reply arrives, I tear the seal with shaking hands. While I cannot encourage you, my liege, I am most grateful for your kind words. Yours faithfully, Hildegard. Well, she won't resist my charms for long. Let's... Okay, what's this? Propose an alliance. Yeah, I'll accept an alliance. Um, okay, I'm attending a dance in Brno to spend some time with Queen Hildegard. The mere thought of touching hands makes my heart jump, but when I arrive, I find her stuck in a conversation with my spy master, Duke Slavomir. Okay, he drones on and on. Okay, you know what? I don't want to get anywhere near him. I mean, I'm pretty sure that my... Yeah, it's a 100% chance of success anyway, so I don't need to increase that percent, because you can't. Okay, um, there's no woman lovelier than Queen Hildegard. In her presence, my words often fail me. None of the compliments ever do her justice. Perhaps a carefully drafted poem about her capture of virtues? I will write about her. Okay, so what suits her? She's cynical, just, and greedy. Hmm, okay, is she noble? Yeah, I'd actually think that that's her best one, because she's just, so I think that's... To the heroic King August, your virtue is the life-giving son of my world. I wish only to be by your side, that I may know the depths of your love. Please be the Odysseus to my Penelope. Signed, Queen Hildegard. I think she liked it. That's great. Okay, do I have any other wars I can declare? Yes, I can declare six wars. Ooh. I can press your claim. I'm not going to be threatened there. Yeah. 
And I'm not threatening me. Let's go ahead and raise my armies. Uh, the thing is, you do have more than me. That's the problem. Uh, I do have a lot of alliances, though, so let's see if I can call you to war. And I'm gonna call you to war. And I'm gonna call you to war as well. And hopefully they will all show up before it is time for me to get annihilated. So, how quickly can you get over here, guys? Oh, pretty quick for you, that's good. Okay, Boromir. Boromir! <laughs> I think I recognize that name. A free tenant renting some of my land in Bernal has pulled in an exceptional harvest this season due to his meticulous planning. He wishes to use some of his profits to purchase a piece of my estate from me so he can build upon his success and grow more crops next year. Yeah, forget farming, he should be in my court. I don't care. Now he's my courtier. Okay. Perfect. Now that I have enough people, we're gonna go attack this. Okay. There is never a quiet moment. My daughter and heir Pratilla is so full of questions. I do my best to encourage her curiosity, but sometimes I cannot help but get exhausted by the constant stream of thoughts and queries. Well, when a mother and father love each other very much, she is now curious. Okay, well, there's nothing you're doing right here, so why don't you go and take their capital so that... They will stop. Okay. Bayorad, Queen Hildegard is an insufferable spawn of hell. Have you seen how she rolls her eyes? Ridiculous. My vessel, uh, my vassal, Duke Ratislav, throws his head back with a wicked laugh. Hildegard is still conversing with her friends, but I can tell she heard him. I hate to see her hurt. I am going to duel him. He draws a sword with a cocky grin. Oh, I would enjoy like no, I cannot talk today. I'm sorry. Oh, how I will enjoy wiping that arrogant look off his face. When I'm done with him, Duke Radislav's humiliation is absolute. Bruised and blushing, he croaks out an apology and limps away to lick his wounds. Queen Hildegard, on the other hand, is glowing like the sun. You are a true hero, King Otis. You have my eternal gratitude. It was my honor. I beat him in the duel. That's great. Okay. Come on, no, you need to join the f Great. That's wonderful. So I lost the fight because not everyone was there and somebody decided to just leave. Uh, right as they're getting there. Um, that's... Great, uh, but the good news is, is that my wife is pregnant, so hopefully with a son this time, because uh, that would be ideal. Okay, I can get another perk, and so perks just, you know, are little improvements you can make for each ruler. Um, yeah, I'm gonna pay him so that he can do stuff for me, but quickly, let's, no, not you, let's assign you instead. Boromir, you got this. Uh, you will go here instead, I think that's better for you. I have another child. Uh, you are intelligent and pretty. Well, I don't know what just happened. Okay, uh, let's change your name then. Both uh, pretty and intelligent. Let's go with... Hmm. Actually, let's just... What is your mother's name? Ermintrude? We can go with Ermintrude. That's nice. Every time I close my eyes, I see Queen Hildegard's face. Sleep will not come. I cannot wait another moment. Cloaked in shadows, I make my way to the garden outside her living quarters. The sight of Hildegard's chamber window makes my heart stutter. So close, and yet so far. But wait, who is that climbing up the tower? The shady figure stops by Hildegard's window and unlatches the shutters. I'm gonna try and do this. And it works. So, uh, she becomes my soulmate. That's perfect. In this game, you tend to marry for politics and then fall in love, rather than marrying for love. That's just the way it works uh, in medieval times, I guess. Let's convert another culture, like above. Okay, perfect. And let's see if we can convert the faith here. Um, because we want them all to be the same. I think I talked about that already. Let's ask for more gold. Perfect. Okay. And then... I'm still, right, I forgot, I'm still fighting you. That's, I actually forgot about that. That's not a good sign. Let's just send everybody this way. Uh, and no, you are not going to get easy. Uh, we are going to siege this and then I will fight you. Oh, I've already won. That is my, I guess my uh, allies did that. Uh, cause I guess I've already won. Okay. And then I'm just gonna siege the area so that um, we can win this war, hopefully. 
My allies are really coming clutch here. Good job, guys. I will defend you. Here, come on. All right, and the war is won, and the siege is being held, and all is going to plan, except for the fact that I'm getting conquered. But that's okay, because as soon enough, we will get this... We will finish. I just needed enough allies, and I needed to not forget that I was at war. None of those were very good. Okay, so why don't we send you to conquer? Nope, we're gonna go fight. Okay, oh no. Okay, so my chance was not very good. That's a problem. Okay, well, we're getting... Cr okay, there we go. Everything seems good. Um... Need to raise my armies again because they all pretty much got killed, uh, which sucks. But uh, we're already at 91%. Uh, nope. Well, that just went down, so that's great. Oh, I have another. I have another uh, daughter. What are you? You're both comely and quick. Um, the this is just a brief overview of traits. I'm gonna go over it in greater detail later. But basically, um, there are six tiers of having uh, genetic traits. And with a seventh just being neutral or as in not having any. So there's, you know, uh, there's like, for the, there's three categories as well. So there's strength, there's attractiveness, and then there's intelligence. Um, so the, they're just uh, three tiers of, on the bad side, and then three tiers on the good side. So quick is the first tier on the good side, and then there's intelligent, and then there's genius, and then there's comely, pretty, and then beautiful. Uh, for this one. So she's comely and quick as compared to this one who is pretty and intelligent, but you know, we'll still take it. Uh, let's go with Svetlana. Sure. I like that. Not really sure it fits the Morovian culture, but hey, more power to you, right? Uh, let's go siege the capital again. And lose the fight, I guess. Where did all those troops come from? What the hell? Oh my god, I might just surrender, honestly. Um, I guess you're independent now, because I, I, that was ridiculous. I don't know what happened. Ooh, can I still declare war on you? No, you have far more than I do, because my troops, I have none. Uh, at least I can buy some, uh, whoa, pause, ransom. Let's ransom you, sure. Uh, at least I can buy some men-at-arms, which will increase what I have. Um, which will be very useful. Uh, let's just go ahead. This is heavy footmen. Yeah, that's heavy infantry, so let's get some light horsemen as well. And then let's just increase the sizes a bit. Okay, and I don't quite have enough for that, but uh, soon enough I will. Okay, can you please give me a sum this time? I feel like I'm turning into Henry VIII. We are going to just educate you in the meantime. Sorry, there's a lot of pop-ups right now. That's annoying. Uh, we're just going to educate you real quick. And you are calling me to war. Okay, that's not really a problem usually, because usually you can just accept it and then not go. The AI doesn't really do that, but I certainly do. Um, sure. Let's give you that. Okay. Guess let's see. Finally, a son. Okay. Uh, you have no traits, so I can name you pretty much anything. Oh, your father's name is Charles? I like that. Let's go with that. Perfect. And that is my heir. So I will play as him when the game's over. The way this kind of works is unless you have special laws or you set the game rules differently, um, it tends to be male-dominated um, because that is how medieval <laughs> Europe was. So, I mean, it's not really fair, but... I mean, you take it as it comes, right? So, I could change the game rules at the very beginning, um, but honestly, I prefer playing this way, because I think it's more accurate. And, uh, it certainly is better than, uh, having too many heirs. If I go to succession laws, uh, it's gonna be split up so that every eligible heir is gonna get an equal chunk of land. Uh, which is a big problem, uh, if you have a lot of heirs. Like, if I had five sons right now, I would be getting a fifth of this kingdom. That's not good. <laughs> um, now, the primary title is the kingdom itself, but when it comes to the counties inside of it and where I can draw my levies from, that's where it starts to be a problem. And as you can see, I'm actually over my limit, um, so I should probably grant something to another one. But still, you know, it's just crazy. I'm going to grant these to you. Alright, 
And then let's just. Okay, what? Let's record. Record, I guess. Okay. Wow, people are just not showing up to my court, are they? I have to recruit them. Okay, can I sign you? Perfect. All right. And then let's get a perk real quick. And uh, let's just play it out a little bit. And I think I'm going to declare war on Bohemia as soon as I get the chance to. Oh, whoa, what just, did Bohemia just disappear? What happened? Okay. You have claims to the entire thing. You also have claims to the entire thing. So who do I like better? You like me, you like me less. Let's go with the person who likes me less because uh, their only account is for to a duke. Um, and this will get them to like me more. So let's declare war on you. I know they have more than me, but guess what? I can call in my allies, so you're going to be very useful. Let's just... Oh, oh wait, this one. This one, yeah. Sorry, I forgot that's my allies' war, and that I don't really care about that. I'm not gonna... You don't have anything. Nothing good, at least. And you also don't have any troops. So yeah, we're just gonna go with the one. Let's raise our armies. And march them in. Yeah, they should meet me there. Uh, okay, she's pregnant again. Now, I don't really care if it's a son. Ideally, it would be a son, because in this game, anything can happen. And by anything, I mean your son could, like, end up infertile, which would be game-ending. Um, or he could end up with leprosy, or die of plague, or decide to become a monk. You know, there's, there's a lot of things that can happen. So it's good to have a backup heir. Exactly one backup heir. <laughs> because once you have more than one backup heir, then the problem of everyone inheriting equally becomes a problem. And yes, I can change this. When I get certain innovations unlocked, that won't be for a long time to get primogeniture. Um, yeah, it's gonna take me a long time, so we're just gonna do what we can to not get the realm split up in the meantime. Which is going to be somewhat difficult, but we'll do our best. Okay, I took Pratilla out playing with a bow, and to my surprise she ran into a wounded doe. That rhymes. She later lashed out at me, thinking I'd staged the whole encounter as some kind of test. You know, could have felled an animal yourself. Let's accept that. Okay, let's get another. It's best to kind of fill out a tree before moving on to another one, unless you really want, like, exactly one in a different tree, just because they get more powerful as you work down them. So, that's why I went with that. Oh, and I took a sun and air hostage. That is going to give me a huge bonus. Um, basically, the bonuses, um, the war score has to be 100%. To, to get them to surrender. Um, and so that's why I always go straight for the capital, because especially if it is part of the territory that I'm trying to take over, it's going to give me a bonus for both being in a territory that I'm trying to take over and for um, being the capital. So that's why I always go for that one first. Oh, good. It's a little girl. What are you like? You, again, have no traits. So let's just randomize a little bit. Philippa. I like that. Let's go with that. Okay, and look, see, now my, they're kind of going out and raiding for me, which is great. All I need is three more percent, which really shouldn't take long. That's really just one occupation. There we go. Perfect. And great. Great Moravia has just taken over Bohemia. So I think that's what I'm going to call it for today, guys. Um, I hope you enjoyed. Um, you know, it's still a little rusty because I'm just starting out. I've never really done this before. Um... But if you liked it, please subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, whatever you want to do. Um, and if you have any suggestions, let me know. If there's anything you don't understand, if I'm talking too fast, I know I'm talking too fast. But uh, just let me know. So thanks, and I'll see you next time.